In the heart of Tokyo, a rumor circulated about a midnight train that appeared only once a year on the night of Obon, when the veil between the living and the dead was thinnest. They called it the Yurei Densha, the ghost train, a phantom service that carried souls to the afterlife. And it was said that anyone who boarded it would be trapped forever, unable to escape the restless spirits that roamed its carriages. Determined to debunk the myth, a group of thrill-seekers, including myself, gathered at the rumored station as the clock neared midnight. The air was thick with anticipation and a chilling mist that seemed to rise from nowhere. As the traditional time for spirits to wander the earth approached, a distant whistle pierced the night, and the outline of an old, dilapidated train emerged from the fog, stopping with a screech at the platform. Despite our apprehension, curiosity won over fear, and we boarded the train. The doors shut with an ominous thud, and as the train lurched forward, the station disappeared into the mist, as if swallowed by the night. Inside, the carriages were dimly lit, the only illumination coming from flickering lights that cast ghostly shadows. The seats were empty, save for a few figures cloaked in darkness, their faces obscured, silent, and unmoving. As the train plunged into a tunnel, the atmosphere shifted. The sound of the wheels grinding against the tracks was drowned out by whispers in a language that was neither Japanese nor any known dialect. The temperature dropped, breath turning to mist, and the figures in the shadows began to stir, their movements jerky and unnatural. Ignoring the growing sense of dread, we explored the train, each carriage revealing a new horror. One was filled with traditional Japanese dolls, their eyes following our every move. Another was a banquet hall with a feast laid out, the food rotten and crawling with insects, yet set as if waiting for guests to partake in the macabre meal. We realized too late that the train was not bound for a physical destination was traversing the boundaries of our world and the next. Each carriage was a realm of nightmares, a piece of a puzzle that hinted at a terrifying reality. The train was a purgatory for lost souls, and we were its newest passengers. The further we traveled, the more the line between the living and the dead blurred. Phantoms of past passengers appeared, reenacting their final moments, trapped in an endless loop of their demise. The scenes became increasingly personal, revealing fears and secrets we had never shared. As if the train itself was peeling away our defenses, exposing the darkest corners of our souls. In the last carriage, the true nature of the train was revealed. It was a colossal, sentient entity, feeding on the fears and spirits of its passengers, growing stronger with each journey. The cloaked figures were its minions, herding the souls it collected, preparing them for the journey to the afterlife. Or worse, assimilation into the train's ghastly existence. As the realization dawned, the train's interior transformed into a nightmarish landscape, a fusion of our fears and the train's malevolent energy, the exits sealed by unseen forces, windows revealing only the swirling mists of the spirit world. We found ourselves trapped, racing towards an unknown fate, our screams drowned out by the whistle of the Yuri Densha echoing through the darkness of a realm where night never
never ended. Trapped on the Ure Densha, we struggled against the growing tide of despair. The train, a living entity, seemed to delight in our panic, its corridors elongating and contorting, creating an ever-changing maze of horror. Each compartment we passed through was a domain of dread, designed to break our spirit and claim our souls. In one carriage, we encountered the spirits of those who had tried to challenge the train's curse in the past. Their ghostly forms were eternally repeating their failed attempts to escape, their faces twisted in expressions of eternal terror and regret. From them, we learned that the train had been cursed centuries ago, a vengeful act by a powerful spirit wronged by mortals, turning it into a vessel of torment and retribution. As the train hurtled through the spectral landscape, outside the windows, we saw glimpses of other realms, nightmarish visions of worlds beyond our comprehension, each view a fleeting glimpse into the infinite possibilities of the afterlife, some terrifying, others tragically beautiful. We realized that to escape, we needed to understand the rules of this supernatural realm. Each carriage seemed to operate under its own set of twisted logic, a puzzle that, if solved, would reveal the path to the next. We had to navigate through these puzzles, facing our deepest fears and darkest memories, which the train conjured into vivid, horrifying reality. Our journey took us through a carriage filled with mirrors, each reflecting not our own image, but scenes from our past, twisted and darkened to instill fear. Another carriage was a forest of whispering trees, their leaves inscribed with the names of lost souls, the ground covered in a mist that whispered of forgotten lives and untold stories. Despite the terror and confusion, we began to notice a pattern in the madness. The train, in its own twisted way, was guiding us, testing us. It was a crucible for the souls it carried, a trial to determine their final resting place. The spirits we encountered, once passengers like us, had failed this test. Their eternal fate to ride the train through the darkness. Our resolve hardened. We pressed on, determined not to succumb to the same fate. With each carriage we conquered, the malevolent intelligence of the train seemed to grow more focused its efforts to break us more desperate and personal. It created illusions of our loved ones, scenes of agony and betrayal, trying to weaken our resolve through guilt and sorrow. But with each passing trial, we grew stronger, more aware of the train's machinations, and more adept at deciphering the twisted logic of its realms. Our progress did not go unnoticed, the cloaked figures, once content to watch from the shadows, now actively sought to hinder us, their forms shifting and changing, becoming more monstrous and terrifying, embodiments of the train's dark will. As we neared what we hoped was the final carriage, the very essence of the train seemed to shift into a state of alert its entire being focused on stopping our advance. The corridor leading to the last compartment stretched before us, an endless path lined with the tormented faces of souls lost to the train's hunger, their silent screams a dire warning of the potential fate awaiting us if we failed. And at the end of this gauntlet, the door to the final carriage awaited, an ominous portal glowing with an otherworldly light, promising the end of our journey or the beginning of an eternal nightmare. The 
air thrummed with power, the train's will pressing down on us like a physical weight, its desire to claim our spirits for its own, a palpable force driving against our steps towards the looming threshold. As we approached the final carriage, the atmosphere grew increasingly oppressive, the air thick with the train's malevolence and the collective dread of its trapped souls. The door to the carriage was adorned with intricate carvings that seemed to shift and writhe under our gaze, depicting scenes of the train's dark history and the countless lives it had consumed. With each step, the whispers of the past grew louder, a cacophony of voices begging for release or screaming in torment, each one a remnant of a soul absorbed by the Yuri Densha. The door itself appeared to pulsate, as if breathing, its surface cold and slick like the skin of some vast, slumbering creature. Bracing ourselves, we pushed open the door, and the interior of the final carriage was revealed. Unlike the others, this one was starkly empty. A vast, open space that stretched far beyond the physical confines of the train. The walls, ceiling, and floor were made of a swirling, nebulous mist in which faces and forms appeared and vanished with tortured expressions. The essence of the train's collected souls at the center of this ethereal expanse stood the heart of the Yure Densha, a massive, pulsating, organ-like structure from which all the train's corridors and compartments seemed to emanate. Veins of light stretched from it in all directions, pulsing with a sickly glow, feeding the train's never-ending journey through the shadow realms. The entity at the core of the train, a being of pure malice and sorrow, materialized before us, its form a constantly changing mass of faces and limbs, each one a twisted memory of the souls it had devoured. It spoke in a chorus of voices, each syllable dripping with the pain and suffering it had inflicted over centuries. Its words, a tapestry of the darkest emotions. Facing this embodiment of the train's essence, we understood the true challenge. To free ourselves and the trapped spirits, we needed to sever the connection between the entity and the Yure Densha. The pulsating heart, the nexus of its power, was the key. The entity, sensing our intent, unleashed its fury, shaping the mist into nightmarish forms, each more terrifying than the last, in a desperate bid to protect itself and continue its eternal journey of torment. The battle that ensued was not just physical, but a clash of wills, as we fought to overcome the fear and despair the train fed upon. With each attack, we evaded or countered, we drew closer to the heart, our resolve strengthening with the knowledge that the fate of countless souls rested on our actions. As we navigated the treacherous landscape of the final carriage, our every belief and fear was tested. The entity taunted us with visions of our darkest moments and greatest fears attempting to break our spirits and add us to its collection of tormented souls. But with each challenge, we grew more determined, our purpose clear, and our hearts fortified against the darkness. In this surreal arena, where the boundaries of reality were bent and twisted by the will of the Yuri Densha, we prepared for the final confrontation with the heart of the train in sight, 
its pulsing glow, a beacon of the suffering it had caused. We rallied for a decisive strike, not just to end our nightmare, but to bring release to the souls ensnared by the train's curse. Their whispers, now a unified chorus, urging us on. Their hopes and fears, lending us strength for the impending battle against the dark heart of the Yuri Densha. The entity, aware of our nearing triumph, intensified its assault, shaping the mists into grotesque manifestations of its power. These phantasmal creatures, each a distorted reflection of the train's devoured souls, surged towards us in waves, their forms as malleable and unpredictable as the mist from which they were born. Amidst this chaos, we battled our way towards the heart, the entity's attacks becoming more desperate and frenzied. It was as if the Yure Densha itself was aware of its impending doom, the very fabric of the carriage warping and distorting, trying to disorient and separate us. The air was filled with the screams and pleas of the trapped souls, their voices merging into a cacophony that seemed to fuel the train's fury. As we neared the pulsating heart, the entity took on a more defined form, becoming a towering figure of darkness, its eyes burning with a malevolent light. It spoke in a voice that reverberated through the carriage, a sound that was both everywhere and nowhere, promising eternal torment and despair. In this nightmarish realm, the laws of physics and reality were mere suggestions, and the entity used this to its advantage, altering the environment to hinder our progress. The ground beneath our feet undulated like the surface of a stormy sea and the walls closed in, trying to crush us with the weight of the train's dark history. Despite the odds, we persevered, our resolve hardened by the suffering we had witnessed and the spirits we had vowed to free. With each step, we disrupted the entity's control, the heart's pulsing rhythm faltering under our onslaught, the spirits of the train sensing the shift in power, began to rally, their forms coalescing into beams of light that struck at the entity, weakening it further and illuminating our path. The final stretch to the heart was the most harrowing, the entity unleashing its full might, manifesting our deepest fears and regrets into physical form attempting to break our will, but driven by a purpose greater than our own survival. We fought through the illusions, tearing through the layers of fear and manipulation that the entity had woven around its heart. As we stood before the heart of the Yure Densha, its surface writhing like a living thing, we prepared to deliver the final blow. The entity now a maelstrom of darkness and malice loomed over us, its form a towering inferno of spectral energy, threatening to consume everything in its path. The clash that followed was a tempest of light and darkness. Each blow we struck against the heart, echoing through the train like the tolling of a bell signaling the end of the entity's reign of terror. With each hit, cracks appeared in the heart, the light of trapped souls shining through, their voices now clear and resolute, chanting in unison for freedom and release. The entity, weakened and desperate, fought back with dwindling strength its form flickering and fragmenting, unable to maintain its presence in the 
face of our combined assault. The carriage around us began to crumble, the reality of the train unraveling as the heart's hold on the spectral realm weakened. In this climactic battle, where the fate of the Eurydentia hung in the balance, we stood united, our actions a beacon of hope for the countless souls ensnared by the train's curse, each strike bringing us closer to shattering the heart and ending the nightmare journey of the ghost train once and for all. With every strike against the heart of the Eurydentia, the entity's form wavered, its essence bleeding into the mist, weakening its grip on the realm. The train carriages shook violently, the very structure of the Eurydentia convulsing as if in agony, the entity's control slipping away. The spectral realm around us began to fracture, glimpses of the real world seeping through the cracks. The early morning light of a world still oblivious to the horrors that transpired on the ghostly train, the once impenetrable boundaries between the realms were eroding, the entity's weakening power unable to maintain the separation. In a desperate bid to preserve itself, the entity unleashed its remaining energy in a devastating wave, attempting to obliterate us and extinguish the rebellion of the souls it had consumed. The air was filled with a thunderous roar, a sound that was both a scream of rage and a wail of despair, resonating through the collapsing carriages. We stood our ground, fueled by a determination that was more than our own. The spirits of the train lending us their strength and courage. Together, we forged a shield of resolve and defiance, pushing back against the entity's assault. Each of us a conduit for the collective power of the lost souls yearning for release. The heart of the Eurydentia, now exposed and vulnerable, pulsed erratically, its rhythm out of sync, the cracks in its surface glowing with an intense light, the essence of trapped souls seeking escape. We closed in, our attacks synchronized with the chants of the spirits, each hit a blow for freedom, each step forward a march toward victory. The entity, its form fragmenting, lashed out in blind fury, its attacks more erratic but no less deadly, the remnants of its power manifesting as physical and spectral threats, a last-ditch effort to survive and continue its cycle of torment, the carriages of the train were now disintegrating, the reality of the ghost train unraveling, the illusion of its invincibility shattered by our relentless advance. As we neared the heart, the entity, in a final act of defiance, condensed its essence into a singular, devastating form, a dark mirror of the train itself a phantom locomotive of pure malice, its whistle a death knell echoing through the collapsing realm. It charged at us, the very embodiment of the Eurydentia's centuries of sorrow and pain, a last stand against the inevitable tide of change we represented. The collision of our forces was a cataclysm, a clash of wills and power that shook the foundations of the spectral world, a battle cry of the living and the dead against a tyranny that had spanned generations as we fought, the heart of the train, the nexus of the entity's power, began to crumble, its destruction imminent, the liberation of countless souls within reach. In this moment, where past and present 
life and death, horror and hope intersected. We stood at the heart of the Eurydentia, our fate intertwined with the spirits we sought to free, our actions the fulcrum upon which the legacy of the ghost train would pivot, the final chapter of its haunted journey hanging in the balance, awaiting the decisive blow that would either end the nightmare or herald the dawn of a new terror. The spectral locomotive, a manifestation of the Ure Densha's last vestiges of power, bore down on us with terrifying speed. Its form a blur of darkness and malevolent energy, the air screamed as it cleaved through the mist. The very essence of the train's accumulated rage and despair focused into this final, desperate attack. Around us, the remnants of the train's interior were coming apart. The boundaries between the spectral and physical worlds fraying to the point of non-existence. The souls of the departed, once trapped within the train's confines, swirled around us in a vortex of light and shadow, their presence bolstering our resolve, their whispers a chorus of encouragement and desperation. As the phantom locomotive approached, we braced for impact, channeling every ounce of our collective will, and the energy lent by the liberated souls into a counter-strike. Our defiance met the oncoming darkness head-on, a collision of forces that resonated through the collapsing train and into the realms beyond. The impact was cataclysmic, a maelstrom of psychic and spiritual energy that tore through the remnants of the Eurydentia, the heart of the train. Already fissured and weakened by our assault, shattered under the strain, releasing a blinding explosion of light that consumed the ghostly locomotive. Its destruction, a silent, implosive scream that echoed through the dying realm. In the aftermath, the world of the Eurydentia became a void, a silent expanse where the remnants of the train's existence faded like the last echoes of a nightmare. The once oppressive atmosphere of dread and despair was gone, replaced by a tranquil nothingness, a space between worlds where the rules of reality were yet to be rewritten. Floating in this void, we were neither wholly in the physical world nor fully detached from the spectral realm suspended in a moment of transition, the souls of the departed, now freed from the entity's grasp, began to ascend, their forms dissolving into streams of light that climbed toward an unseen celestial destination. Among these liberated spirits, the presence of the train's original architect, the source of the curse, lingered freed from the darkness that had consumed it, the spirit appeared before us, its form no longer twisted by malice, but rather suffused with a sorrowful peace. It conveyed a silent gratitude and regret, acknowledging the wrongs of its past and the suffering it had caused, before joining the procession of souls moving towards their final rest. As the last of the spirits departed, the void began to brighten, the fabric of reality knitting itself back together. Guided by the natural order of the universe, now restored, we found ourselves standing on the platform of a mundane train station. The first rays of dawn casting long shadows across the ground, the night's horrors fading like mist at sunrise. But even as the world returned to normal, a sense of unease lingered. 
a reminder of the thin veil between life and death, and the eternal journey of souls caught in the cycle of grief and redemption. The Eurydentia was gone, its existence erased from the physical world. Yet the memory of our journey, the terror and triumph, remained indelibly etched in our minds. A haunting echo of the night we escaped the Japanese horror train challenge. As we stood on the deserted platform, the world around us bathed in the early light of dawn. The surreal tranquility of the moment belied the intensity of the night's ordeal. The train station, mundane and silent, held no trace of the Yuri Densha's passage. Yet the air still hummed with a residual energy, a whisper of the boundary we had crossed between life and death. Our group, bound by the shared experience of the night's horrors, exchanged glances, each of us searching for reassurance in the other's eyes that what we had endured was real, not just the remnants of a collective nightmare. The physical scars were absent, but the emotional and psychological marks ran deep, shaping our perception of reality and the unseen worlds beyond. In the silence, a subtle disturbance rippled through the air, a barely perceptible vibration, like the aftershock of a distant quake. It was a reminder that though the Yure Densha had been vanquished, the forces it had harnessed, the dark energies of grief and malice, were eternal, merely dispersed for now, waiting to coalesce around a new focal point. As the day broke, we began to notice anomalies in the world around us, small incongruities that suggested our ordeal had altered our connection to the ordinary. Shadows seemed to linger longer than they should, and reflections in windows and mirrors hesitated before mimicking our movements, as if the boundary between the reflected world and our own had been loosened. Discussing our experiences, we realized that each of us had brought back a piece of the spectral realm, an intangible, yet undeniable change in our being. It was as if, in breaking the curse of the Yure Densha, we had also unraveled a thread in the fabric of reality, creating a slight but perceptible shift in the way we interacted with the world. The public began to populate the station, their lives untouched by the nocturnal events that had reshaped our existence. To them, we were merely early travelers, perhaps a little worse for wear, oblivious to the fact that we stood at the crossroads of worlds, witnesses to the hidden depths of reality. Compelled by a need to understand the extent of the change within us, we decided to explore our altered perceptions. Our journey through the Yure Densha had ended, but it had set us on a new path, one that promised further encounters with the supernatural and a deeper dive into the mysteries of the spirit world. As we left the station, the city awakening around us, we felt the pull of unseen threads guiding us towards new mysteries and challenges. The spectral world once hidden behind a veil of disbelief, now beckoned with a siren call, promising answers and further enigmas. Our experience on the Yure Densha had opened a door, revealing a path lined with shadow and light, where ancient spirits wandered and tales of the paranormal waited to be uncovered. The train's final legacy was not just the liberation of its trapped souls, but the awakening of our own to the 
the endless possibilities of the unknown. And so, with the city stretching out before us, we stepped into the daylight, carrying the night's shadows with us, ready to face the new world we had uncovered, a world where the ghost train's whistle still echoed, a haunting reminder of the journey between the veils of life and death.